Hi everyone. Today we are going to do a video on Blazor Server Cookie Authentication. Okay, it is a part one video of this series. So in this series, what we are going to do, we are going to do Blazor Server Authentication with normal .NET Cookie. Okay, so what what is our target in this video are like creating user authentication tables okay creating a blazor server application installing nt framework core and configuring the tb context so our authentication tables look like this like user user will contain user information and the roles roles will contain like a user is admin or super admin or like that information roles table will hold and there is a mapping table between the user and the roles like user roles where we can add multiple roles for any user okay those can be mapped with user id and role id okay this should be the ideal structure of our authentication table so here is the script for the user table so you can run this command into your sql server database okay and here is the script for roles table and here is the script for user roles table okay now let's jump into creating a blazor server the application so here is my cli command for creating the blazor application so let's run the command so project has been successfully created let's open my project in visual studio code editor so here is our project and target framework is dotnet 6.0 okay now let's install nt framework core dependent nuget packages so the first package that we have to install is microsoft.nt framework core so visual studio users copy from the package manager i will copy from the dotnet cli install it and next package that we are going to install is that microsoft.nt framework core.sql server copy the command install it and now we have to create the entities that, that represent our table classes so now we are going to create three classes so those three classes represents our three tables so inside of the data folder let's add a another folder like entities inside of it first let's create the class like users so here is the users class that represents our users table okay so let's add the properties of this class that represent the columns of the users table So finally, our users class look like this, where we have properties like first name, last name, email, and password hash. Okay. Now let's create a another table class that is roles. Okay. This is our roles class that is equivalent to the roles table. Now let's add properties into it. So finally, our roles class looks like this, where it contains properties like simply ID and the name of the role. Okay. Now let's create the class that represents the mapping table that is user roles. So this is our user roles class that represents user roles table. So let's add properties into it. okay finally our user roles class look like this now to manage all these table classes we need to create a contest class that is called database contest class so database cl contest class is equivalent to the database so now in the data folder let's directly create a class like my cookie auth context so the name of the 
uh, DB context class is similar to the name of the database. That is the convention, but you can give any name. But convention is database name should be given as context class name. Okay, now this is our context class. Actually, currently it is a normal plain C sharp class. To make it DB context class, we must inherit db context that loads from the microsoft.nt framework core okay now into the con constructor let's pass the db context options so these are options we are injecting into the constructor of nothing but like connection string like some timeout configurations, all those will come under DB context option. Okay. Now, finally, let's register all our table classes into it. So, all the table classes must be registered as a properties into the DB context. Okay. And this property name must match with our table names okay now in the app settings dot development dot json file let's add our database connection string so to do that we have a default property like connection string inside of it let's add our own property okay here you can add your database con connection string Okay, after adding database connection string, let's register our database context into the program.cs file. Okay. Okay, here we have to specify few options like option start. Use SQL server. Okay, that loads from NT framework. And here we have to pass our connection string. To do that, we can have builder dot configurations dot get connection string. Okay. Inside of it, let's paste our connection string property name. Okay, that's it about configure in the db context for our user authentication tables hi everyone this is the second video of the series blazor server cookie authentication so in the first video we have created tables for our authentication and we have implemented nt framework and the database context now in this video we are going to create user registration pages and we are going to implement the user registration logic okay so for registration pages we are going to use razor pages into our blazor application because pages pages must be reloaded on registering or login right so we are going to use razor pages if you want to use uh, you can use mbc controllers as well it's your own choice but i am going to do in razor pages okay so for that what i will do i am going to use the area section of the asp.net core application so first to create folder like areas okay inside of it another folder like identity okay and inside of identity add a folder like pages okay now inside of pages let's create a folder like account so this folder contains all the logic re regarding to the uh, registration or user login okay inside of pages create a, one more folder like here okay since we are trying to utilize in the area section right so first let's add the layout for the areas so so inside of the shared folder let's add a file like layout.cshtml 
okay now let's so let's add some basic html into our layout okay so our layout html look like this some to save some time i have copy pasted my html so here small navigation bar and then here we want to render our razor pages okay so this is the razor centrized attribute to render the body so here in this place pages gets rendered okay now let's also create a viewport view, view imports under the pages section file like underscore view imports dot cs html so in this view imports dot cs html let's register the mvc helper tag namespace and next let's create the view state for our areas and inside of that we can specify our uh, layout path okay so in the pages folder itself let's add one more file like underscore view start dot cs html okay all these designs will be applied to our razor pages like we are going to create a login and user registration or any kind of authentication related pages we can add here so they will share this layout okay and for time being i have added some dummy html right but in real application you have to make sure this master layout should look like our uh, blazer web assembly master page so that page you can observe in here like this design you have to do for real application okay and let's in the view starts let's define our master layout path okay okay like this we have to define the layout path okay so now basic structure for our areas is defined till now now let's create a, a registration form model okay add a folder like models inside of models let's add one more folder like auth and inside of auth let me add a my registration model so this is my registration view model now let's add few properties that are going to be used as a form fields so our registration to view model looks like this where it contains first name last name email address password and confirm password field okay now let's implement our user registration logic for that let's create a folder like logics okay inside of it let's add a file like account logic okay this is our i account logic class as a first step let's in inject the our database context into the constructor of this file and now we have created a registration vm right form model so first let's create a private method into our account logic where we are going to validate our form fields okay okay our method looks like this let me first check our email in the form is entered or not means is empty or not okay so i can check like so here i am checking basic email validation it is empty or not if it is empty i am returning a error message like email can't be empty okay next let's apply email email rules 
like whether entered email is valid or not okay like using the regex okay okay now here we will add a, a regular expression for email validation so you can google it to find this regular expression you, you no need to create by your own okay is match victor registered email comma and the pattern is our email role if it is not measurement means it is a not valid email then we have to return one more error message and now another rule we are going to apply now that is whether the user is already registered with our application or not we should check this as well okay so for that authentication context dot users dot any email to lower equal to register dot email dot to lower now we will return like user is already existed here any means it will fetch us boolean value if already the user is existed with that email address okay now here you can return like the user is already exist okay so these are the email validation rules now let's check for the password okay Here we are applying basic rule for password and confirm password. If any one of the field is empty, then we are returning a error message like password or confirm password can't be empty. Okay. Now we'll check for comparison. Okay. So here we are comparing between password and confirm password if they are not matching we will return a error message okay finally we are going to apply the password set of rules like uppercase lowercase and special character number and character length like that we are going to use a regular expression and validate our password okay so here is the regular expression for password rules like here i am adding password rules like lowercase letter at least one uppercase letter one special character and at least one number and total length of the password is eight characters okay let's validate it okay here we are validating our password again regular expression and if that is not match we are going to return a error message finally if every rule is satisfying we simply return string dot empty as a message okay so this is our private method for validating our registration validation okay now we have to add one more uh, private method that is for uh, password hashing okay what is password hashing so it is a rule that we never store our user password plainly directly into our database okay it must be encrypted so that encryption also we should not do normal encryption the password once it encrypted it cannot be decrypted that means a string that can be encrypted and it cannot be decrypted is called hashing so hashing is one way so if you, if password is hashed 
it cannot be decrypted so we have to do a password hashing so for that we are going to uh, add a some private method where we implement our logic for password hashing okay so my method is like okay this is my method where i am going to pass the user password as a input parameter and now first thing is let's initialize a array like salt of byte 16 byte character salt so what is salt salt is a key that will be used for hashing our password okay so it will be like a key now using rng crypto service provider we are going to populate our uh, salt okay so rng crypto service provider so this this loads from let's import the namespace using system dot security dot cryptography okay yes and i have to get the bytes of data and pull it into push it into salt key okay now i will get some random generated bytes of code 16 bit of code into this salt that was generated from the rng crypto service provider okay now now we are going to hash our password using rfc algorithm okay so rfc equal to new rfc 289 bytes and here we can pass password as a first parameter and salt as a second parameter and the iterations i will specify like count so what it will do means okay it will encrypt my password using this salt key and in that encryption process it will loop or iterate through thousand times here i have specified like thousand right that many times it's going to encrypt by looping the uh, password and salt key encryption okay see i am going to initialize a one more variable like hash okay and i am going to fetch the some bytes of data from the hashed password so here see i am getting the 20 bytes of data from this hashed password okay and i am that i am storing it into the hash variable so now let's create a uh, one more byte variable that is like a hash bytes okay so here its length will be 36 bytes okay so here i have created a new variable hash bytes and now what i will do means i am going to array dot copy okay and specify the salt byte here and and next specify zero so, so it's showing like source index source index means from this salt start from the zero means from the first character onwards we are specifying from the first character onwards we have to copy to where to copy we have to copy it to hash bytes so in the hash bytes up to where from zero to 16 characters so what it will do it will hash bytes is 36 character right here we are specifying salt from starting character we have to copy into the hash byte variable up to where in the hash byte from 0 to 16 character byte space it should be copied means first 16 
characters of hash byte is nothing but our salt okay same way now array dot copy okay now here i can specify hash hash is what hash is nothing but my password 20 characters password okay comma zero means starting from first character onwards okay in the hash where i want to copy i want to copy it into the my hash bytes okay and from where from 16th character onwards see here from 0 to 15 is occupied by the our salt key in the 36 byte of array now from the 16 byte to 20 means remaining 20 characters i am going to take in from this hash means password hash okay so finally what my hash bytes is contains it contains its first 16 bits are salt key and remaining 16 bits are our hashed password okay and finally what we will do we will simply return our password hash as a string so that we are going to use base 64 and to that we are going to pass our hash bytes okay so this is the logic for hashing our password now let's implement our main logic for user registration so let me create a method like so this is my user registration method and its return type is a tuple we are returning boolean value and a string message as a response type so here what i can do first let's validate my model for that I am going to call registration model and here we should have our registration model right so first i am uh, validating the model properties whether they are valid or not okay so if it is contain message what if it is content message some error some validation is occurred means validation is failed if we enter validation is success we are returning string right empty string so if the variable contains something then there is an error message in that variable so in that case i can simply return false comma message okay now let's create a new users model Okay, that is our table users model. And map uh, our users data from the registered model to our user model. So per password hash, we must call our password hash method and to that we can pass our password as an input parameter. Okay, now let's save the new user into the database. okay save the new user into the database so for a newly registered user should provide some basic rules okay so if my if i go to my table i have some lookup single record for my sample like a role like username so for any authenticated user in my application see any registered user in my application i want to give the user role as a default role okay so now what i can do let fetch the role from the database where name dot two lower 
so i want to fetch only user roles for my demo okay once we got the roles we have to insert the role into our uh, user roles mapping table so if role not equal to null user roles user roles equal to new user roles okay since we have just created new user right from this we can get user id equal to new user dot user id okay. and role id equal to role dot role id okay now we have to save this user role into the database so user roles dot add user roles and authentication dot save changes okay that is our logic for user registration so finally if everything goes smooth we will return true and message will be empty because no validation errors okay so this is our logic so what we are doing we are initially validating the user model if everything goes good we are adding the new user into the database so by default we want to provide a role like user to the new user so we have to fetch the new user from the database and using the user value and role value we are going to update the values into the user roles table okay so now let's create a interface class for my high account logic so this is my high account logic interface let's register the our method definition here so our method definition is like this okay And now inherit the high account logic here. Now register them in the program.cs at scope level. Add scope for every request, it will be a single object. Okay. okay and now let's add our razor pages into our accounts folder inside of the areas so let's add our razor pages inside of the accounts folder like so register dot cs html dot cs is for model file register dot cs html is the view file okay first let's define our model okay so this is our model class to make it this class as a our uh, razor page model we have to inherit page model now let's inject our i account logic into our uh, register model constructor let's register our register vm model and enable form binding okay so create a property like public register vm So to make it model binding with our form, we have to decorate with bind property attribute. 
okay now it can read the data from the form directly let me add a one more property like string error message so with this variable we are going to display any if any error occurred that message will be displayed on our page okay and let's create one more variable that is bool is registration successful okay so these are the properties required by our razor page and this is the property where we decorate only to this property as a bind property so it has capability to read the form data okay now let's create a life cycle method like razor life cycle method like get on a thing which gets executed for http get request so now we have to inject uh, one more instance into our constructor that is the context accessor okay if http context dot user dot identity dot is authenticated if user is already authenticated we should not allow him to access the registration form okay in that case we simply redirect him back to application home page okay or else we can show if not authenticated we can show the registration page okay now let's add and here i have added copy pasted some html data for my registration form to save some time so let's walk through the html what i have added here so using page director we have to specify our path for path for our registration page and we have to define the model so he this is our model right register model so the same model must be declared here as a model and here if you observe error message if error message exists we are displaying the error message okay if at all if there is a registration successful then we are showing some a small alert message here and down here user registration fields like email name last name password and confirm password fields are added and to this we have to remember one thing that you have to use the razor asp for to the razor asp for we have to find our property so that our register model can read the properties from entered in the form okay like that register form dot first name register form dot last name register form dot password okay everything must be binded to the field okay and here form method should be post okay now let's add our logic for post method so our post method looks here i can use my account logic methods like user registration equal to await underscore account logic dot user registration method async to this method so form data is binded to this property right i can send register form variable directly okay so if what it will returning this method returns boolean success and a message so what is that message message is error message so if the registration success is not success means false registration is not successful then we will have error message right so to display error message we have a property error message and this property we are displaying here conditionally if there is something in the message okay so what i can do error message equal to registration dot message okay else in the else what we can do 
is successful equal to we can assign as true okay and simply we will display the same page okay in real world you, you will have a logic for uh, confirm email where you have to send the user with a confirmation uh, url as a email okay for the demo purpose i am not doing any email confirmation here simply i am i will after registration i will simply display the registration form itself builder dot services dot add http context accessor okay okay and uh, small correction uh let's give it here reverse order okay if not matched if matched that is okay if not matched okay okay now this is our user registration form let's test the validations for our email if i submit with empty form see email cannot be empty okay and let's give a invalid email okay this is an invalid email format right and submit see not a valid email so let's give some valid email and first name last name and now give empty password and confirm password see they cannot be empty and now let's give some weak password which doesn't satisfy our regular expression okay like one two three four one two three four okay it is a very weak password right let's check our password validation firing or not see password should contain at least one lower one upper one special so our rules are all displaying so let's now give a proper password okay now register now with proper details see user is registered successfully okay now if we go to our database okay here you can see my user record is successfully inserted into the tab table and here you can see my hashed password and you can also observe role one that is nothing but user role is assigned to our user okay that means we are successfully registered into our data hi everyone this is the video three of the series pleasure server cookie authentication okay in the part one and part two we have created authentication tables and we have implemented the user registration so in this video of the series we are going to write the login logic for the user authentication and also we are going to configure the cookie service for authentication and also we are going to use the blazor authorization plugin for enabling the authentication okay so here is our project let's continue coding so first thing is for any user authentication we have to validate the user password hash right so let's write a small private method where i can validate the user password against the database password that is hashed one okay so let's me create a one private method okay this is my private method where i am going to validate the normal user password against the database hashed password so we know that our dp password is stored as base 64 string right so from that string we are retrieving the bytes of password okay so let's declare a new variable like salt of byte 16 bytes okay and here we are copying the okay db password hash bytes first 16 bytes into our salt variable so if you recall our user registration video 
we can observe that total 36 bytes of hashed password we are storing into the database in that 36 bytes of hash password first in first 16 bits are its own key means nothing but salt so here we are fetching that salt from the our hash bytes of password so we already know the salt right so using the rfc 2898 derived bytes we are generating the again hashed password of byte using the same salt okay which help to hash the password in our database okay so now here what we are doing we, we are hashing the user entered plain password with the salt and thousand iterations and this iteration should match with the iterations that we specify for password hash method for the user registration okay so what we are doing ultimately we are generating a hash password from the plain password okay so from that uh, user password bytes we are fetching the 20 bytes and storing it into the bytes variable okay now what we are going to do we are going to compare the each character from this user password password hash bytes with the this db password hash bytes but it is total 36 characters it is 25 characters right so first 30 first 16 characters in this variable are salt means the remaining characters we have to compare with our user password hash okay So here what we are doing, we are iterating do for 20 times because our password is 20 character length. Now here we are comparing with the DB password, but from where after the 16 bytes, because first 16 bytes are solved and with the our newly hashed password. If every character is matches, then this if condition won't execute and our final output will be written true. That means or password entered by the user is a valid for the authentication okay so that's all about our validate password hash method now let's create a vm for our login so in the models folder instead of the auth folder let's create a new view model like login dot vm sorry login vm dot cs so this is our view model for login so let's add properties okay after adding properties our login vm looks like this now let's add our main method for user authentication so go to account logic and let's add a method Okay, this is our method. So first, let's try to fetch the user by the user entered email address. Okay. Okay, here, fetching the user by the user email address now if user object is empty means user doesn't contains with that email in our database then return message like invalid credentials okay if user exists then we have to validate the user password against our database password for that what we can do if validation password and its first parameter should be user entered password from our form that is 
login password and second will be our database password so password hash okay so valid password will return true when the password matches with the database password so we have to write a condition like contradict okay means password is not valid then we have to return again same message invalid credentials so if password also matches that means that is a valid user then we have to prepare login cookie okay so for that uh, we have to first prepare let's first prepare the claims for the user create a claim object and let's add claim a claim is nothing but a key value pair so user first name last name email address anything can be a claim okay so you can add claims like i am start add claim and here there are few default claim types So what I can do, I can format the name for the claim type like, okay. And I will add one more claim like email. And now in claims, roles can be added as a one of the claim okay so let's add a role claim so to add a role claim first let's fetch the user roles okay to fetch the user roles query is like So here is our query like I am joining user roles with roles so that I can fetch the user ID and the username by using the user ID condition. Okay. Now let's add all the collection of roles into our clients. Okay. So let's add a for loop to add all the role clients. Okay, that's it. So here for every different role name, the key will be role only. Okay. For claims to add role claims, we have to add a claim like this by looping it. Okay. Now let's create a claims identity object. And our authentication type is cookie authentication, right? We can specify like cookie. Authentication. Okay, let's import the namespace and authentication scheme. It will just add the name like cookie, cookie authentication. It's defined the it is a cookie authentication claim process. Okay, and let's initialize a empty path authentication properties. Okay, and finally, allow the user to sign into our application using the cookie authentication. For that, we can use default method like so. To use the uh, authentication, we have to use the HTTP context. So, for that, let's inject the HTTP context into our logic as well. Okay, now using the HTTP context, we can sign in the user that will create the cookie. 
authenticate to cookie. So HTTP context dot sign in async and here for authentication type we should pass so copy this and pass it as a first parameter and second parameters will be new claims principle to that we have to pass our claims identity as an input parameter okay and third property will be our authentication property okay that's it so this http context dot sign in what it will do it will allows the user as a authenticated user by creating a authentication cookie so let's return string dot empty that is that let's return string dot empty that means there are no errors authentication is successful okay now let's uh, define this method definition in our i account logic interface so now create treasure pages for our login go to areas and instead of the pages and instead of the accounts let's create two more files like login dot yes html it is a view file and let's create also model file login dot cs html dot cs okay this is our login model now as a first step let's inject the http context into our constructor and also inject the account logic into our constructor okay and we know that our login page contains login form right so to read the data from the login forms we have to register our login view model and it should be decorated with the find property so let's add it okay this is our login form model now let's add a small property which is of type string it helps to it helps to display the error message of the user authentication so now let's create the on get async method of the register pages so this on get async method is invoked for http get request now we have to check for the user authenticated or not if the user authenticated is we should never allow him to access the login page okay so authenticated user redirected to home page or else we are going to show the login page form okay now let's configure our login form so first let's add the uh, routing for the our page and also map the model okay to save some time let's let me copy paste the some html code to add the login form okay this is our form and here you can observe one div conditionally displaying the error message so if the authentication fails we are going to display the error message for that we are checking the property we have created right error message so we are going to use that property and below that here we can see a small form with the two input fields one for entering email and one for entering the password okay and here you have to remember one thing that ASP for is a razor page syntax where you have to specify the login form and its property. Login form and its property. So login form, what is this login form? 
this is our object we have initialized here for our model binding so that it can read the data entered into this input field directly into this object okay and next here we can observe form is specified and post is specified so now the thing is we have to uh, write our logic regarding the on post async which gets executed for the post request so let's write the method this is my method first let's try to authenticate the user okay so error message equal to await account logic dot login user user login and here we can pass input parameter my login form okay if string dot is null or empty means we got some error message then we will show the same page on that on page of the login form we have added error message displayed div right so that will be displayed okay we'll simply return page if there is some error happen if nothing is there then we will redirect the user to home page okay that is our uh, post async method logic now let's configure the cookie services in our program.cs file for that go to program.cs okay and here let's register the service like builder dot services dot add authentication and here we have to specify the cookie authentication default scheme name so what i will do i will copy that name from here okay so this is name nothing but we are doing cookie authentication we have different types of authentication like cookie authentication identity authentication right so they those can be differentiated by the names okay so here we have specified we are about to use cookie authentication and we have to configure the add cookie service let's import the namespace and in the add cookie we can specify our cookie expiration so i will specify like my cookie expiration for 20 minutes sorry for days we can use cookie right i will specify like five days if you want uh, minutes and hours also you can specify here time okay and now just add the middleware like add authentication and add the add authorization above the app use routing okay use authentication app dot use authorization okay to integrate authentication or user information into our blazor components we have to install one additional library that is okay we have to install a library like nuget like microsoft.aspnetcore.components.authorization okay this is for blazor server or blazor web assembly okay let's install it okay after that let's go to app dot blazor component so to inject the uh, user authenticated user information into blazor components we have to add a parent component around the router route so that is like cascading authentication state okay so it should be the parent of all components in our application so once that is done now let's add a small component blazor component uh, go to shared and here let's add a component like login display dot razor okay 
and here let's write some components like so here authorized view so this is the default blazor component uh, to render some authenticated user information so here it will contains two kind of child components like authorized okay and another one is not authorized okay so in the authorized what i can do i will add a and tag and here i want to display uh, my authenticated user information something like name so what i can do here authorize view have a property like context okay dot user dot identity hyphen i can specify name so only when the user is authenticated in that case only this uh, block will be executed if not authenticated this block will be executed so in this block what i will do i will give the links for my register links for my registration and the login and go to login.cshtml so copy the url paste it here and go to registration and paste here and now let's render this uh, component onto our menu main layout dot razor and here let me add my new blazor component that is login display okay that's it we are done with the user authentication let's run the application and try to login with valid credential so here is our application and here you can see register and login if you click on register you can see registration form and if we click on login we can see the login form let's try to test with invalid uh, user authentication credentials see our uh, validation error is filing so let's give the valid credentials sorry it is gmail dot See, I am successfully authenticated, and here you can see my name, user authenticated name. And if you inspect element and go to applications and go to cookies, here you can see ASP.NET Core dot cookie. That is that cookie is nothing but our authentication cookie. So that is how our login logic will work. Hi everyone, this is the fourth and last video of this blazor server cookie authentication okay in this video we are going to implement user logout logic okay so in our project now let's add a logout functionality okay so logout we don't have any ui and we have we only have dot net code so instead of creating two files like logout.chhtml and logout.chhtml.cs i am going to create only view file in that view file only using razor syntax i can able to write the dotnet code as well okay to make our logic simple so let's add a view file like logout.chhtml okay First thing, let's define the route for this logout. And now let's import few important authentication namespaces like a 
okay import name pastes like authentication and authentication cookie from the microsoft library okay now let's inject the http context into our view now to write our c sharp code we can use a rel syntax like functions okay inside of it we can write our uh, life cycle methods like on get async on post async of razor pages we can implement directly in the razor by using the at the right functions so since the logout is always recommended to post right so we are going to write a method for on post async okay let's define the life cycle method of the razor page so this is our method now what i can do using i http context http context dot sign out okay default method we can use to sign out and we, here we have to define the type of authentication sign out our is cookie authentication right cookie authentication default dot authentication scheme okay that's it it will remove the authentication cookie after successful logout we have to redirect our application into the home page okay so that's the logic uh, we have to implement for the logout now let's add the anchor tag for logout button okay go to login display component okay under the user authenticated name let's add our anchor tag for logout okay so here what i will do since it is a post request right? logout is a post or logic inside is post so i am going to use a form so defined a form and its type is post and action we are defined our route okay now let's create a button logout button inside of it so that i'm clicking the button our form get posted and we are going to log off from our from our, from our application okay that's it this is our uh, logout functionality let's run and test our logout functionality so click on login and try to log in with our credentials so here you can see logout button let's click on logout and here you can observe an error that is 400 which means bad request why it is getting bad request if you go back and inspect element here we are posting our form okay so where form posting is our razor page so in mvc or razor page in in any of the dotnet application form post will always expect the anti forgery token okay by default blazor server components won't generate anti forgery token because logout button is in blazor component right this is blazor component here we don't have a uh, anti forgery token generated by default okay so that is the reason our request is redirected as a, as a bad request so to overcome or to resolve this issue we have to generate the anti forgery token into our blazor components as well okay so let's try to implement it in the models in the auth let me create a new model like application initial state okay so this is my new model to so this new model i am going to have only one property that is anti forgery token property okay okay next thing is in blazor we have a underscore host dot cs html file so go to there okay now here we are going to generate the 
एंटी फोर्जरी टोकन ओके टू जनरेट द एंटी एंटी फोर्जरी टोकन हियर वी नीड टू इंप्लीमेंट हियर वी हैव टू इंजेक्ट आई एंटी फोर्जरी इंटरफेस दैट इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द माइक्रोसॉफ्ट लाइब्रेरी here i injected the anti forgery interface and now in the layout let me initialize my application initial state class okay so for that let's import the namespace first sorry it is using and let's initialize our application state App initial state folder new application initial state. Okay, here anti forgery token. We can generate the anti forgery token. Get an our token. So. For that we have to pass HTTP contest instance and dot request token. Okay. okay. So why we are generating here local host dot CSS HTML is a browser file, not a browser component, and it is the first file or a parent file. So it it will come from the server. Means we are generating the token when the request is at the server. Okay. Because Blazor server is single page, right? Only first request only will hit the server. Remaining all requests will be handled at the browser, right? That is the reason. By default, we won't have anti forgery token. So in this case, what we are doing, we are explicitly generating the anti forgery token when our first request went to the server. Okay. Now it should be passed to the Blazor components. So for that. Here we have component, right? This is the entry component. It will open app, right? So here, what I can do, I can pass the parameter param siphon and type of the property name. So this type of property will be should be in app component as well. Okay, I will name the property like initial state and pass our app. Initial state. Okay. Now create one more model. Okay. So that is like token provider dot cs. This class also contains single property that is anti forgery token. And let's register this class at our scope level, so that this class I'm going to inject wherever which our component or which our Blazor component I want. So let's register this class in the program.cs file at a scope level. And scope and pass. Token provider. Okay. And now, okay, come back to here. In the host file, we are passing to the app component, right? So open app component, app dot riser component. Okay. Let's open code model. And inside of the underscore imports, uh, let's register. The namespaces, this namespace. So that I can use the model very easily. Okay. Come back to our app dot rather component. Okay. So in the host file, we are passing initial state as a property, right? Copy that name. And it should be a public. And its type is application initial state and name is this one. And it should be coming from the parent component, right? So here it should be a input parameter 
tag writer should be given. Okay, now let's open page lifecycle method like on initializing. And here, let's inject our token provider instance. We have registered right scope level, so we can inject it. And to this token provider, equal to initial state dot anti forgery token. Now token provider contains the token provider dot anti forgery token as a into the anti forgery token. Okay, now our uh, using the token provider instance, all our Blazor component can fetch the anti forgery token. Now go to our login display component and here we will have small change like let's add a hidden input field. Okay. And its name should be it is a fixed name. And here value should be our token provider dot anti forgery token. So let inject our token provider. And pass it to our here. Okay, now we are ready on form posting. We are sending the anti forgery token to our uh, post logout treasure page. Okay, and here the name should be this like this only because by default request verification token has a hidden field and uh, it contains the anti anti forgery token that is the default convention of the any dotnet treasure or mvc application so here the name is like double underscore request verification token okay make sure to give prefix with the double underscore okay this one not a single underscore this is a double underscore okay now save and test our application for logout functionality okay now here you can see our logout button let's inspect it and here you can see our uh, anti forgery token is generated. We know that anti forgery token is by default used by the Razor pages or MVC application for the security purpose for any post request. Okay. Now, if I click on logout, now I have to successfully log out from my application. See, I am successfully logged out. So, that's all about the logout functionality in the Blazor server cookie authentication and it is the end of the series i hope this video has provided some useful information to you all if you like my video please support me by subscribing to my channel soon we are going to meet with new videos until then